not yet. They're just uh, kind of checking in with each other. They're all saying hi. So, yep. No. There's about 10 so far. Yeah, uh, well, today is going to be anything but dumb. So, yes. No, it's it's uh, called Behind the Voices. And, um, oh, that's not, not connected to that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, just the name that my fans helped me come up with. Um, what I do want to be made aware of for you guys, just to make sure I'm taking care of your guys' time, is there a certain out point that you guys need to be out by? Um, between an hour, hour and a half. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Behind the Voices. I am your host, Derek Stephen Prince. And today, on Behind the Voices, with our next power couple of the month, we have none other than the winner of GamePers Video uh, Actor Gamer of the Year for uh, 2020 and the July Award winner for Best Comedy Short Life's a Bitch, Richard Epcar and Ellen Stone Epcar. Hi. Hi. I was actually a GamePers uh, Voice Actor of the Year, Steve. Voice Actor of the Year. There you go. I was... I'm terrible at gaming, so don't give me any word on that account, believe me. And I don't allow him to play games with me. That's off the table. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure that I'm, uh, as I'm checking in with you guys, uh, everybody can hear me okay. Everybody can hear Richard and Ellen okay. I want to make sure, technically speaking, we're not challenged in any way, shape, or form. If anybody can check in with me really quick, because I'd hate to start doing the show and asking a whole bunch of questions, and you guys just see mouth flaps and nothing coming out of them. That's what we get paid for for a living. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Great. Fantastic. So, um, I'm going to ask you guys a couple of startup questions before I check in with everybody else, just because... Um, it's, uh, stuff that I am very curious about for you two. Uh, I've known you guys, I, I, I went back, I've known you guys for 26 years, which is wow. amazing. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's a long time. That is a long back, time. Back I don't the, know, how do you keep track? I, well, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, Power Ranger days, right? Absolutely. Yep. And you were one of the guest directors that would uh, often direct me. So, yeah. 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 Um, so, um, 
I've done some research on you guys going all the way back at, through your careers, at least as, as much as I can go through from what IMDB has put on their pages. Which is totally incorrect. Totally, because, totally incorrect. I mean, there's so much more that we do. Oh, I'm sure. It's incorrect. It's incomplete. Yes. Incomplete. Yeah. So is it correct for, of me to say that both of you as individuals before you got married to each other started off as on camera actors? Yes. Okay. And still are. And uh, yep. And still are. Um, so uh, this is a question for both of you, but separate, but together from on camera actors, right? Cause you, you guys both have done a lot of stuff as on camera actors. I was going back and I was going, yeah, I used to watch those shows. I probably remember you. And I didn't even know who you guys were at the time. Um, but how do you make, or how did, how, how did the stars align where you guys are both on camera actors and then suddenly you guys start doing voiceover work for anime specifically back in that day? It, it's Ellen's fault. And Ellen's I fault. Okay. Ellen's fault. Sure, please. Okay. The, the long and the short of it. I was... I'm the long of it. <laughs> it's just the short of it. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, was, I was doing a film called Jesse's Girls. It was a Western. Yes. And, um, did you find that? Yes. Oh, okay. So anyhow, um, uh, I was one of three women seeking revenge on the men who'd done us wrong. And there's, there's a long line. Um, anyhow, uh, at the end of it, the casting director asked me if I'd be interested in doing some voice work. I asked him if I, if they needed any men, if I could bring my boyfriend along with okay. me. Okay, okay, yeah. And so we both went in and we both got it. And that was the beginning. Wow. Then it just tumbled yeah. because we worked Snowball. and worked and worked and worked. Yeah. Every single day. But yeah. that particular job got us in with uh, with Robotech <laughs> and Harmony Gold and all that stuff. And that's how we started doing a ton of the uh, anime and actually, started doing all the other stuff. Actually, there's there's another thing. It was it was Judy Belshi, <clears throat> who was my agent at the time, and she gave me an audition for this company called Saban. <laughs> <laughs> and it was I went into this office on Ventura yeah, Boulevard they had a little Steve. office on Ventura do you remember yep. that Steve? yep before they moved down to Westwood yep yeah and they well, had they a little Burbank, right? one of those little cassette tape tape recorders yep and I, I did the and from audition from that the guy became wait, a billionaire wait 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 we'll figure that deal out I called Judy up and I said these guys are hats this is a waste of time after the audition. <laughs> I think your first assessment was correct, actually. <laughs> but that's where it began. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so, and then from there we did all the Saban stuff, and I directed a lot of stuff and, and adapted a bunch of stuff for them. And so, yeah, it just, it just kept going and going. And, and, and the, the reason, I mean, for me, it was I was just being hired right and left to do voice stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Same. Kind of hard to go and audition for on camera when there's like 200 guys to say three lines. It was kind of ridiculous, you know. Right. So that's kind of what happened. But you know, we we love. I mean, for for us, I think that the on camera is really our first love in many ways. And although I do really love the voice, I love it. You know, both of us have been very fortunate to play a lot of different characters and a lot of roles, and uh, it's been very very gratifying. I have to say in many ways. So absolutely, we're very very fortunate. In that way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But um, my career, actually, uh, it, a lot of it expanded when I, during my pregnancies. Really? Yeah. Huh. It's like... So should I get you pregnant I, again? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, anyhow, I, I, was, I was pregnant... And I <laughs> read a fantasy in because uh, there was always that joke that Burt Reynolds wanted to have a child. 
So I became his fantasy in a movie called The Man... Uh, the Man Who Loved Women. The Man Who Loved Women. Oh, Women. yeah, yeah! And then... <clears throat> And then uh, there was a Charles in charge, and oh, this is this is funny. It wasn't at the time, but I got booked after an audition to play uh, this pregnant woman. And then I got called up by the casting director, who told me, "Ellen, love your work, but the part's been cut out." Actually, what they didn't tell me was. The director's wife wanted to do the part, so <clears throat> that never happens. But <clears throat> in show I business, did. Does it? I never. did a year on <clears throat> General Hospital, <clears throat> and I was pregnant. You were pregnant for a and, year. Well, you know, during that time, <laughs> so they kept giving me bedpans and cardigans and clipboards to hold while I was doing. General Should have been hospital. behind a crash cart. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, because in those days you couldn't be pregnant; otherwise, right. that was the end of your career. Right. So, <clears throat> I remember this one. <clears throat> excuse me, my allergies. <clears throat> this one casting director, Mark Mellis, whose name I won't mention. You just did. Uh, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> He leaned into me and said, my dear, I was eight months pregnant, and he said, my dear, you should really lose some weight. Uh, and uh, you should say, I will, as soon as this baby <laughs> comes out. <And laughs> the case, because you couldn't be pregnant. I didn't say, asshole, I'm pregnant. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Well, you could have said half of that. <laughs> but, but I worked a lot. I worked a lot for years. <clears throat> and then when our son came, we didn't have babysitters. So I would take him to all my auditions. Mm -hmm. And I got a big British sitcom while our son sat on the director's lap. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, he didn't. That's poop cool. Up. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there were a lot of situations like that, and I worked and I worked, and then, uh, you know, the voice stuff started taking precedence. Yeah. 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 Well, we're all, you know, this is, we're really fortunate, all of us are fortunate to be in this business, because mm -hmm. we've been working a lot and keeps us busy, and, uh, you know, in many, many ways, it is better than the on-camera world, because it's just... Not for um, me. For you, I mean, you prefer the on-camera? Well, well yeah. I, I love to do the on-camera work. It's just getting the on-camera work is just so much more difficult. than yes. Which is why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've written my own series. Right. And we're, um, uh, Richard and I star in it with Stephen Jabalovsky. Right, exactly. It's yeah, if, if any of you guys have not had the opportunity to watch that, it's on YouTube. It's not very long. It's only about maybe six and a half minutes. Yeah, Check it out. It's called Life's a Bitch. Exactly the way it sounds. Just type it out and you'll find them. And it's actually, ex extremely funny. I loved it. Actually, you, come, to, come to my Facebook page <clears throat> or my uh, Instagram and the link is right there. Oh, great. So, Fantastic. Have a little awesome. Little vignettes that Ellen and I have yeah, been, doing been doing on our so Facebook page. There's quick we've little got... snippets of stuff. It's not really in the show, but it's just kind of like a promo mm -hmm. for the show. And we just shot another quick little segment of uh, of the show that hopefully will be, we have to edit it and put it together and all that now, but uh, we right. shot it and I think it's really funny. And Stephen uh, is also in that uh, briefing. Now, so. correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, your daughter was involved in the project, yes? Yeah. She yeah. directed this last She directed episode. it. Yeah. She directed the last episode. That's awesome. And, yeah, she also plays our daughter in the show. Okay. So she had to audition for that part. <laughs> <And> <laughs> she had to go through a big, oh gosh, my throat. But she does all the music, mm -hmm. which she's so talented. She she writes all the music. Really? She sings this, I don't know if you remember the theme song, but that's her singing it, and she wrote that theme song. <laughs> she sang it. Okay. Very yeah. cool. That's yeah, awesome. She's she's great. So, uh, yeah. So it's uh, it's really a fun project that Ellen wrote, and we love uh, we love it, and uh, we're hoping 
that we can get funding to do the entire series and uh, you know and just shoot it. It'd be wonderful. That would you know? be amazing. That would be amazing. And I'm. No problem. Go go take care of yourself, Ellen. So the coronavirus. <laughs> That meant something else. But we won't go into that. <laughs> so, I have to ask you, Richard, and yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna fanboy for a moment here, okay? Oh, okay, yes. So, I am a huge comic book fan. Uh -huh. Have been ever since I was a teenager, and I I have to ask because I'm assuming, obviously, just you know, because the voiceover world is very incestuous as it is, and then people yeah. start talking, and if you do good work, then they all start talking to each other, and they're going, yeah, you should listen to this guy, you should talk to this guy, whatever. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's also what happened with you as well. But it, as it relates to the first time that you were able to uh, play the Joker, yeah. and then, of course, every installment thereafter, did you ever have to get approved by... Um, uh, either uh, Jerry Robinson or Bob Kane. Did you have the opportunity to meet either of those two guys? Meet Bob Kane. We met Bob Kane, but it had you nothing did. to do with that. We met him years and years ago when we were we were both getting our uh, our demo reels edited or on camera yeah. demo reels. Okay. He happened to be there with his girlfriend at the time. What? It was, it was kind of funny because uh, he said to us, he said, uh, you know what you need to succeed in Hollywood? I said, what, Bob? He said, you need to create a character like Batman. I said, oh, okay, Bob, thank you. I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> thought, oh, that's that's great advice, Bob. Thank you. That is so, amazing. The way that whole thing came down was we there was a lovely person. Um, um, God, I'm going. I'm forgetting her name mm. now. Uh, um, the wonderful casting director that we love so much, who is the fill in a car accident. Oh, uh, Bridget. 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 Bridget, Bridget Berdine. I'm sorry, Bridget. I mm. went up on your name for a second. Oh. Um, Bridget Burdine, uh, and I'm sure you went in and, and auditioned for her at times. I well, did. She had, this, she had this game called uh, <clears throat> uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe. Okay. And I went in to audition for that, and they had Warner Brothers on the line, they had DC on the line, they had all these people listening in, and they. She basically said to me, she said, Richard, I want, they want you to read for every one of the characters. Wow. So for all of the characters in DC, which was, I got to read for Superman and Batman. It was like being a kid in a candy shop. Oh really my fun. God. That's amazing. Hooker. And honestly, I don't even know where that voice came. It just came out of me and the laugh and everything. It was just crazy. Right. Uh, and then I read for the uh, Mortal Kombat characters and I read uh, all the other characters and I read for Raiden. Hmm. And I really liked, I felt an affinity with Raiden. And uh, on my way out, Bridget said to me, <clears throat> she said, uh, you know, they liked you for everything. She said, but if you got to choose, who would you want to play? And, you know, they never asked. Oh, my God. Asked, that's that's uh, a kid in a candy yeah, store. I mean, she was just, you know, I, I don't think it had any uh, power in getting me the job or anything. But, you know, I said, well, the Joker was phenomenal because it was almost like an out-of-body experience when I did the Joker. Wow. And I said, Raiden was a great character. So in, literally mm -hmm. a day or two later, they called me and booked me for both those characters. Now I've been playing both of those characters for twelve years now, That's and it's been it's been a delight. I'll so tell you right. cool! You know, at first it was rough mm. because uh, you know Mark Hamill is super famous for playing the Joker, of and course. I had a lot a lot of his fans give me uh, uh, stuff about that. But you know, mm. uh, I a lot of people accuse me of trying to sound like him, and I had never heard Mark do the Joker. Right. And actually, actually to this day, I've not heard the, heard Mark say that do the Joker. Wow! And I. And Put that on a uh, on a Facebook thing because somebody said, "You sound like Mark. Are you trying to sound like him." And I said, "No, I haven't heard him. I'm not trying to sound." Like him. I said, "But thanks for the compliment." And he, Mark Hamill came on, yeah. and he said, "I've heard your Joker, and I think it's wonderful." So I thought that was really really nice of him to do that. It certainly made my day. And Seal of approval, really absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He's a he's a super nice guy, as I found out. So uh, that I thought that was really nice. And you know, listen. It's like anything, when, you know, these characters are iconic characters. They're going to go on after Mark and I are gone. Yeah. And people are going to do these characters. They're going to do Batman sure. and Superman. All those characters are going to go on you forever. You know who's going to do them? I'm going to do them. Ellen's <laughs> going to do all of them. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> 
it's all in the family. Exactly. Exactly. For those of you guys who are, are not aware, and I'm not going to get into too much detail about it now, but if you ever have a chance and you get to go uh, and look on each of their IMDb pages, which to all extent, like Ellen said, does not include everything that they've done. But those of you guys who are comic book fans like myself, uh, you've also done Commissioner Gordon, right? Yes. And so you've been, yep. a series called Batman Unlimited for Warner yep. Brothers. Yep, and you've also done Sandman, am I, if I'm not mistaken. For Marvel, I've done him in three different games now. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, Solomon Grundy, I did him in a, a bunch of uh, mm-hmm. Batman cartoons mm-hmm. as well. So. Yeah, a bunch of those guys. Yeah, it's really listen. I, I it's fun for me too, Steve, because I grew up watching those shows too. And those yeah, really, absolutely, really a kick for me as well. So you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be uh, uh, barking up the wrong tree if I started saying stuff like Wonder Twin Powers activate because you'd get it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, there, there was a DC show back in the '70s that like had all of the the Marvel uh, or the DC characters, and the Wonder Twins were part of that. Anyway, never mind. All right, get off track there. Um, okay, so I have to ask, which one of you two is the Trekkie fan? I'm a Trekkie fan. I love okay. Star Trek. Okay. Did you uh, speaking of of Star Trek, and then you know? six degrees of separation did you ever meet leonard nimoy i actually did you did <clears throat> because um i worked at a, a, a theater company theater 40 in beverly hills and i did a lot of plays there okay and Leonard was uh, a big a big uh fan of theater 40 okay <clears throat> So he used to come to see my plays. Yeah. But I worked with William Shatner, actually. Oh, okay. Called Petricelli when I was in college. What? And it, <laughs> yes. And it was shot in Tucson, Arizona with uh, Barry Newman. It was one of my first things that I did. And uh, he uh, he was not really a nice guy or warm <clears throat> back in those days. He was not very friendly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he especially we, didn't like anyone yeah. taller than him. So that was like... You know, Although taking it up to more current times, <clears throat> sorry, this thing is yeah. Your sector, right? Uh, it's it's these allergies. So anyhow, we were in London at London oh. Comic Con. <clears throat> Actually, and Leonard was, Nimoy was there at the London Comic Con. I, I forgot. Oh, about that's that. right. Yeah, I was in the I was in the uh, the green room with Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> yeah. He was reading a book and it was like he came kind of gave off these vibes he didn't want to be bothered so i didn't bother him yeah but uh, yeah i would have liked to have met him uh but anyhow so we were it was shatner and then us mm. were the headliners okay wow Which, yeah that's true in denver, oh i thought Congo. that was London. no that was in denver yeah, and, and yeah, actually, they had her name on the marquee. It said William Shatner and Richard F. Carnell and Stern <laughs> on the marquee. So that was kind of cool. That's yeah. cool. That is cool. Uh, a little fun fact for you guys. Um, everybody else probably, you know, will be bored by it. But um, Leonard had a brother who also did uh, theater, um, and he had his own theater company in West. Uh, 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 Westwood or near Westwood, West LA called the Jewish uh, Community Theater Center or the Jewish Community Center. Yes, I can. Uh, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure where it's. Uh, you know what? I think it was the West Side Jewish Community Center, is what it was called. Anyway, neither here nor there. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah. Um. 
All right, so I've I've taken up enough of your guys. Oh, can't hear them. Interesting. Hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Let me see what's going on here. Uh, I can hear you guys, but for some reason, it seems like they can't. Probably, probably just a couple of minutes. Still can't hear? No? Hmm. Why don't I do this, guys? Um, I'm going to switch the screen. So it, it has um, another screen, so nobody will be able to see your account. I'll recall, I'll hang up with you guys, I'll recall you, and then hopefully that'll help fix the problem. Yeah? Okay. All right, hang on really quick for me, guys. I am uh, seeing if hopefully this does what I'm hoping it will do. Uh, so just bear with me really quick while we sort out the technical difficulties. But we'll find out, because uh, since I am now just contacting you guys, I don't know if anybody else can hear you, but I'm going to switch the camera mode, so hopefully. Uh, you, uh, nope, hang on. Do, do, do. window capture. Oh, can you guys at least, hmm, I don't know, maybe not. Um, hmm. um, not to this 
Boom, we're back. Um, hopefully you guys can still hear Richard and Ellen if... Uh, I was asking about Star Trek, yep. Yes. Oh, okay. They can. They can hear. Yay! Awesome. <laughs> no, what we were what we were gonna go ahead and do um, is go ahead, and I'm gonna start going through some of uh, the comments here and seeing if there's a way that um, I can start asking you guys some of the questions that okay. people have been asking. So, okay. let me scroll back up here. I do have a, a couple of, not necessarily questions, but comments. Um, people are, are praising you for your Myotis Mon, Richard. Oh, thank you, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. They're very quiet. Interesting. Why is that? <laughs> Why are you guys quiet? Okay, it's fixed. There we go. All right, well. Wonderful. Yay! Awesome. All right. Um, technology. Can be your best friend or not. Um, da, 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 da. Let me go back. Uh, Jeff, uh, uh, why can't I remember Jeff's last name? Um, <sighs> dear me. Jeff. Who did, what did he do? Burn. Oh, Jeff Burns? Burns? Is that yeah. the last name? Oh, yeah. yeah. Jeff Burns says hi. He's he's on. All right. All right. Uh, oh, interesting. This is a question for both of you guys. Um, if uh, other than Kingdom Hearts, which you've you've been introduced to, Richard, um, for both of you guys, if either if either of you could voice a Disney character, be it hero or villain, could be somebody that's already been created, or maybe a future Disney character that hasn't even been done yet. Maybe it's a fairy tale. Is this a Disney classic character, or is this because Disney now owns Marvel? They now yeah, own this is very true. Could be anything. Yes. So you've got all of that, that whole smorgasbord palette. What would What would you be? Uh, I, like you know, since Marvel is now part of the Disney universe, uh, and I thought uh, I thought that uh, uh, Roland did a great job of playing him, but I would love to play Thanos. I think that'd nice, be really yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's so many. You know, there's so many. Anything in Star Wars, of course, anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually, I actually got to do uh, do voices on two different Star Wars games. Did you? And that was really. I got to do like 40 different characters, so it was really fun. Um, who would you pick? And, and just a, a little note, speaking of Star Wars, I directed the dub of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope into the Navajo language. And That's right. Yeah, yeah which uh, was one of... My, my actually, one of my proudest moments, because, you know, we, we have a lot we do in the life. We have a lot of characters we've done. We have a lot of experiences. 
this was an experience where I was part of trying to save a language that is indigenous, mm. <clears throat> the Navajo language. And so I was on the reservation for a few weeks with the engineer. Oh, wow. Was, I, I recorded uh, all the characters. That's amazing. Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, the Navajo version that exists today. Now, I, I have to, since you brought that up, Ellen, I have to ask, because when I look at you, and we all know your background, it's like, you know, the Jewish woman, Ellen Sonebka, and it's like, how, how did that even come about? It's like, yeah, you know what? We're going to do a Navajo version of uh, Star Wars A New Hope. Let's just call up Ellen. How does that happen? <laughs> no, um, I was hired by Deluxe. Okay. Ah, there we go. I helped Richard, a little bit in there. Richard. There Richard we go. Did there we go. Take. That makes sense. Um, yes. So that's how that came about. It was, was basically they, uh, the Navajo Nation contacted Lucas, and Lucas uh, said, "Well, go to Deluxe. They they know how to do these things." And Deluxe approached us to do the project. And, that makes uh, sense. The, connections. The rest is history. Connections, so. connections. For those of you guys who also don't know, Ellen does do a lot of directing. Um, for those of you guys who are Pokemon fans, she actually did the entire uh, Pokemon Generations online uh, shorts that you guys can actually watch on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And I was in that. I played a couple. Yep. Yes, you were. And so were you? And so I was you. too. Yeah, absolutely. You were there, and you were there, and you were there. And I, we were all there. Yeah, yes. Uh, and um, it, that was a challenging, actually, time to direct because during one group of the episodes, oh. we were booked in the studio, and the San Diego Comic-Con was happening at the same time, and all the actors were down. Oh. Yeah, that was, that was a rough but uh, yeah, but uh, I I grew to really understand the Pokemon world. Yeah, because I didn't know it I'm before so sorry. that. <laughs> but to getting back to the question, Ellen, for you specifically, um, anything in the Disney universe? Um, I you know I don't know that you get to play a bunch of bad villains, do you? I do. Do you? <laughs> I'm I'm known a lot for the mothers I've played. Okay, okay. But uh, I love I love the deep archetypical. Yes. Uh, villains, villains and villainesses and. So who would you pick? <clears throat> yeah, who would you pick? The the Queen and Sleeping Beauty. Nice. You know. Um, yes. Um, Maleficent. 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 Absolutely. Um, if they did a re you know, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I love all this. Basically, all the the way she treats me, she would. <laughs> uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to take a slight detour before I go back and, and look at all of these questions that are coming in for you guys, just because I have to ask Ellen. Obviously, I'm sure part of it had to do with you just wanting to still be creative, still do stuff on camera. How did the whole thing come about with, with writing Life as a Bitch? Well, I started writing when I was seven years old. Okay. Poetry. Yeah. And short stories. And I'd write plays for the neighborhood and we'd act them out. And uh, my, my father died when I was seven. And writing became my way to express myself. Mm. Mm. So, because uh, my mother was busy working and I had a little brother. And <clears throat> it was, I, I didn't have someone to talk to. So it was my way of talking to myself. I do that to the mirror, but nobody answers. It's yeah. <laughs> so I've written all my life, and um, I've written poetry books. I've written screenplays. And, and on Facebook and on uh, Instagram, if some of you follow me, I put some of my... Uh, my stories, my day-to-day -day stories, and, 
And these days, they're, they're things that amuse me because the world is just so frightening right now. And so I try and give myself a lift by writing something that amuses me. Yeah, we could all use a laugh right about now. Yeah. And, as, yeah. and actually, we, we haven't done a video in a little bit because... Uh, so check been, our videos out because they're, yeah, they're very Yeah, there's funny, about actually. 20 of they're them. They're really I short. Think. They're less. They're like they're a minute. Minutes. They're a minute long. They're a minute long. And but you can go on Ellen's uh, page or my page and see them. Actually, um, <clears throat> we should we should really upload those to the YouTube. Yeah, we right? should put them all together because they're, they're, there's a lot of very funny ones. I need technical help. Uh, we all need technical help. Um, I am getting fr a comment from one of the uh, viewers, uh, Janice Ender, Ellen. Um, if uh, I guess they are actually doing a live action Tangled, uh, is suggesting you uh, for Gothel. So there you go. What? Uh, 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 Rapunzel's um, stepmom. Oh, yeah. Would you tell her to get in touch with people? <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, it's, it, let, let me just add to that. It's like I, I've, uh, I started doing classical theater when I was 12 years old. Okay. I love Shakespeare and the Greek tragedies and the yeah. Greek comedies. And, and I, it, to this day, I, I do a lot of uh, Shakespeare. Nice. Classical. So that kind of lends itself to the 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 majesty mm -hmm. of the villains. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Upcar, um getting a question from Vampire Vess, who is actually uh with us today from uh England. Um who is your favorite Star Trek captain? That's a tough one. Uh, I, I have to go with uh, Shatner. I thought Captain Kirk was awesome, but uh, mm -hmm. I did like Picard a lot. You know, yes. there, was a, there was a like about Picard. Yeah. But Captain Kirk was more of a kind of a adventure, kind of take charge kind of guy, gets into scraps and all that sort of thing. Picard was more intellectual. And, you know, it was, it's, uh, I mean, I, I think they're both really excellent, but, uh, you know, I always kind of, uh, I think the original series mm -hmm. was kind of what set the tone for the whole thing, and I like it. And it was the original, and I like I like the original the best out of all of them. So. Yeah, it's it's hard, especially if you grew up with that. Um, yeah, as did I. Um, I got a question from Shara um, for Richard. Um, very big Kingdom Hearts fan. Um, <laughs> She wants to know when you auditioned for Kingdom Hearts, did you originally audition for Ansem or was that by happenstance, like maybe you auditioned for another character and then they asked you to audition for like Ansem as well? How'd that happen? This is actually a great story because what happened was I never auditioned for Ansem. Uh, the, way, mm -hmm. the way I got the part of Ansem was that Billy Zane did the very first one. Okay. And, and then for whatever reason, he did not return. Okay. Uh, uh, and the way I got the part was the, the guy who does the voice of Ansem in Japan does the voice of Bato and goes to the show. So, <laughs> oh, man. Happened, what? Said to Disney, who's the American voice of Bato? And they said, Richard Epcar. So they hired me. They didn't even have me audition. So I, I can count on my hand five times, or on one hand, I should say, uh, how many times I've been... <laughs> cast without an audition. I've done over 600 characters and I still have to audition for every single role. That uh, is amazing. This one time where they just hired me and I went in and I knew nothing. Now, can I can I tell you a quick story? I'll try to make it quick. Absolutely. It's, it's a fun Kingdom Hearts story for you Kingdom Hearts people out there. The first time I went in, I knew nothing about Kingdom Hearts. I knew nothing about the game. I knew nothing about the character. Mm -hmm. So I went in and there were six Japanese producers in the booth and there were six uh, producers from Disney in the booth. Wow. And every time I would do a line, the engineer would come on the talk back and go, just a minute, and they would talk amongst <clears> themselves <throat> for five, ten minutes and come back and say, can you do that a little faster? And then i do the line, and they say, just a minute, and mm -hmm. they'd talk amongst themselves for five, ten minutes come back and say, can you do that a little slower? And yeah. that went on all day long, and then <laughs> break, and I took the uh, engineer aside. I said, how did Christopher Lee put up with that? He said, oh, they did it to him once, and he said, all right, 
I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to read this script from the top to the bottom, and then I'm going home. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, now I've done I've done eight or nine of them, so maybe I can I can do that at this point. But they've 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 pretty much let me let me alone and let me do my own thing. But I I, I really love that being part of that franchise. The fans are fantastic. And it's a huge game, and people love that game so much. Yes. So it's really nice to be part of that thing. They do. They do. And yes, it is. Um, that's amazing. Has that ever happened with any other uh, character that you've done where a Japanese voice actor who originally created the role then suggested you? Is that, that's yeah. like, that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Really. Like wow. I said, maybe on... Maybe on one hand, I can count the times that I was just cast without having to audition. <laughs> See, at this point, I've been doing this for 40 years now. You know, you would think at this point, people would say, oh, yeah, let's just get Epcar for that. But no, right. they make you go through the whole magoo. I just did. I just auditioned for something recently. We And I'm sure you're doing the same thing. We're all doing stuff from home now. Yeah. You know, recording. Yeah. So I had to do something. And then they sent me back, and they wanted me to do a callback. And I'm going, Really? Really? Yeah, a callback. So I had to do a callback for this thing, which is really ridiculous because, once again, I think I can count that on one hand, how many times we've had to do callbacks for voice work. But Generally, we do it, we get booked. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Either you don't want me, but, you know. Yeah. Well, but, you know, in, in all fairness, back in the day, Steve, we used to go and do auditions, and the director would be there, and they could kind of direct you as to what they were looking for. Now, mm -hmm. when you get an audition, mm -hmm. you're just kind of, excuse the expression, pissing in the wind, yep. because you really don't know what they want, and you just have to kind of decide what it is and send it to them and hope you're in the ballpark. But, and, you know, so many times the director will, will hear that, mm -hmm. go, oh, you know, if that guy had only done it this way, but, yes. you know, maybe Well, actually... That's why I have created a whole new way of casting right now. Oh, really? I do tell. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm doing... Send because... checks to Ellen Stern. <laughs> there you go. I actually created a couple of things. I'll tell you after this. But okay. <clears throat> what I am doing right now, because as an actress, I hate doing the, uh, the read without knowing what the face of the character is, mm. without hearing the tone, without seeing the scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I am calling up the actors. I've got the scene in front of me, and I FaceTime. <clears throat> You're doing things the old school way. I let them see the scene on FaceTime because, of course, it's all remotely now. Yeah. I let them see the scene. And then we're not doing sync. That's an impossible. Right. Uh, but I let them see it, and then I have a line, and then I have them read it back to me. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah. And I don't know anybody else who's working that way, but not anymore. I create. <laughs> well, we never did that remotely. No, not remotely. But you know, you used to go in, and you used to have somebody that would actually read lines opposite you, and you know, the whole thing like on camera. Right, right, right. And but that comes, that comes from me being an actress. Sorry, my allergies again. No, it's okay. <clears throat> that comes from me being an actress. Mm -hmm. And knowing the optimum way that I want to record. Yes. Because otherwise, should I be fat? Should I be skinny? Should I be tall? Should I be short? I mean, you know, we, it's just a crapshoot. Right. So this is the way, and I've got, God, how many, how many characters? Uh, There's a lot of characters in this It's thing. a series, and I'm casting the series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's all really young kids for the most part. You know? Yeah. That's the right. good part, too. Uh, um, yes. That's what old timers can't do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are no older people. No, I know. Yet. Apparently, mm -hmm. there's no older people in these movies. No, these no. It's gone. <gasps> so, uh, uh, but it's. This this is the way, and the actors have really liked it. The only thing is, you have to hold your phone while you're watching the screen, and you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way I gosh, how many? I've got I've cast like fifty to seventy five uh, people, and wow. I've done it this way. 
<clears throat> wow, that that's great though. I'm 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 glad people more people need to be like you, please. But but the thing is also is that I want to work with people who are actors, and I want to feel their ability to take direction, to change it up if I need to give them a direction. Yeah. And and you see that in doing that. Because otherwise, if you're looking at people that you've never met before, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just don't know. And I'll tell you another thing. This is an old story. It's going back even before. <laughs> yeah. So this guy, and you may know him when I do this, he, he, I, I auditioned, it was like six months later, and he said, Ellen, I want to bring you in to do the voice. And I said, oh, what voice is that? The voice, the beautiful voice you do. Do you know who I'm talking about? Um, maybe. <laughs> so, so any topic. He brings me in and he goes, do the voice, do the beautiful voice. Like, what beautiful voice? And he goes, you know, you know, he keeps doing that. He worked with me for five minutes. I didn't have any idea what he was talking about because, you know, we do so many voices. Uh, and, you yeah. know, it was like months later that he called you in. For yeah. This yeah. Right. Anyhow. I got fired <laughs> him because I didn't, didn't remember the what voice he was talking about. <laughs> so anyhow, I went to, and this was in the old Inner Sound days. Uh -huh. <clears throat> did you work at Inner Sound? Yes, I did. <clears throat> yeah, we all did. So anyhow, I went to them and I said, this is a very unfair thing. What we have to do in the future is have a sample of that audition so that we can hear it back mm -hmm. when it's months later. And today, that standard. Yeah, but right. I was the one who started it. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> Legend! <laughs> um, I'm going to read this question first before I ask you, Richard, just because I want to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. Uh, have a voice my characters that are unnamed. What's the recording process? Uh, um, <laughs> is it weird? It, I, 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 I just, I, I think, well, I, I'm gonna try and interpret what I think the, 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 is it in English? the per <laughs> yeah, it, it's in English. It's in English. It's just kind of not con. I don't know. Um, okay, let me let me go back to this. Uh, and Bra I, I'm sorry, Brad, if I'm not asking it the way that you intended it to be asked. I'm just trying to help interpret it and put it together in such a way that's going to be understandable for Richard to be able to uh, to answer you. But um, since you've been in Bleach, yes, and you voiced a lot of characters. Uh, that um, maybe sometimes, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to, here's where I'm going to kind of go off on the tangent, Brad, and probably not get what you were insinuating. Um, but um, sometimes you do minor characters that, you know, uh, IMDB doesn't catch, and but you still do them anyway, um, just like you, Ellen. Um, but specifically for Bleach, because I know you did a bunch of characters in that, Yes. Yes. Some of them were bigger. Some of them were not as big. Um, I remember from Bleacher, Zan Getsu, who mm -hmm. was the master. Right. And then uh, Koga, who was the, uh, the, the bount. For the guy and who, I did. Who looks like Bato, actually. And I did Masaki Kurosaki. Who was Ichigo's mom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so for, for that, I'm assuming I'm going to know the answer to this, but I'll ask because they don't necessarily know. When you go in and you do the major character, right? Yeah. If yeah. they have the other characters that are ready for you to voice, yeah. 
Right. Do they just all lump it in together and you just knock it out in, you know, in the session that you have, or do they bring you back so that you're just focusing on the one character and then you do the other minor characters in another session? Well, generally That's when you're, when you're question. dubbing these projects uh, and you're cast to play one, one of the main characters, mm -hmm. you, you do your main character and then oftentimes there, if, if you finish it early or whatever, you have extra time or they, they budget extra time for you to do extra characters. They'll say, hey, we've got these other two, three characters we'd like you to knock out. Would yeah. you mind doing those guys? And, and so you do. So you, you know, a lot of these shows have, uh, you know, uh, tons of characters in them. And so you do your main character and then you try to, you know, you come up and you do all these fun little characters, because which sometimes is more funny. fun than doing the main characters, actually. You know, but uh, yeah. Because time is money, yeah. and if you're in for four hours, they don't want to waste the the less the the last half hour or the last hour. Sure. They want to make use of you. Now on union exactly. shows, you can do up to three characters. So they'll they'll have you do come in and do, you know, one one of your main your main character, and then you go and do a bunch of yeah. these little characters if you have time to do it. And yeah, you know, just depends on what it is. Okay, and then. If, you to do a, a ton more of those little characters and they have to give you another contract <laughs> if it's a right yeah. um another question from uh the person that is uh watching us from england uh vanessa um she is excited to meet you in 2021 at sunny con i guess yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. gonna be there hopefully um helen's not yet We're, i'm gonna work on them see if they'll bring her too i hope they do uh, uh, work on me too while you're at it, will you? <laughs> but, um, question for both of you, not that you're going to remember the show, but she happens to be a particular fan of this one show called Mar. Oh, I did that. Oh, you did. I, did. I oh, was that question for me or Richard? I, I thought it was for both of you guys, but. I think I was in that too, actually. I played Jack's mom in Mar. Yes. And she screamed all the time. Yes. Okay. Oh, I was. I played the. I played the Halloween pumpkin or something like that. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was there a very you. strange show. <laughs> it, it was, but it, it was one of the few that I I liked only because you know, as you guys both know, Keith and Val don't do a lot of anime stuff. I say, wasn't that done on a PCB? That was done over a PCB. I was, I was the pumpkin king or head or so. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I was one of the bad guys in it i i can't remember um anyway this is this uh going back to the point where uh all the characters aren't down there it's like i've got hundreds and hundreds of characters that i've done but back in the olden days uh -huh. um what they First would do days. yes back in the days of the dinosaurs yes what they do before is, beeps Yes, before <laughs> the titles, they'd have the titles, and the titles were married to the forever, uh, the forever script, and that never changed. Right. So when IMDb goes in and looks at that, they see the title that happened at the beginning, and not the titles, not the characters that came in in ensuing episodes. Mm -hmm. so it's like a lot of my jobs uh -huh. are in there and it's like i mean one of my early jobs was robotech right the scene. You did a bunch of and i did a bunch of characters but the titles were frozen uh -huh. and those were changed yeah. throughout the episodes well, that, what she what she what she means is that in the beginning of a lot of these shows and a lot of these companies did that because it was cheaper basically yeah. is that they would do one basic title with the main people who created the show yep. and that would be the, the only titles that they would use and they if you came on, or on in the show you wouldn't get any credit because right. they changed the, the title so that kind of was uh, was not nice to people but it was a lot cheaper for those companies so. yeah, yeah. So, you know Tommy Tommy from Tommy Yoon oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so anyhow Tommy says to me go through Ellen go through Robotech find your characters I'm going yeah, who's who's got time who's got the that? time to do that exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I do have to ask you though, because uh, it just kind of sparked something when I was doing some research for you guys. For you in particular, Ellen, 
Um, well, you've both been involved in Lupin the Third. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you in particular, my dear, it, it looks like you go all the way back to when it was first brought over from Japan to America back in the 70s. Is that correct? Yes. Whoa! Yeah. So am I. I directed is... it. I directed you did? It. Yeah. Yeah. I directed the first uh, American series of the Red Jacket series. Okay. I directed that. Mm -hmm. And then I also, I cast that show. So that the original cast in that, I put that cast together. Oh my gosh! Wow, that's amazing. So, but Ellen has been, mm -hmm. you know, she's in. She plays a ton of characters all throughout. Oh all yeah. The incarnations of it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, that's and amazing. What I like to be is uh, what I call a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have, you know, all these characters. She that... likes to stab me. As well. <laughs> Gently, gently, uh -huh. honey. Uh -huh. I, I Stab love... Stab me with love. <laughs> I, I love um, doing a million characters and changing up. That is the most... Uh, uh -huh. We were talking about, um, uh, like, the early days. One of our... It was our first live-action feature. And uh, Richard directed, and we did the English dub for Cinema Paradiso. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Yes. 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 And, and I wrote and, and adapted it. And, and, and I played, played one the, of the mother. Leads, and Ellen played one of the leads. Oh, and my gosh. Really, really wonderful. And movie. as a matter of fact, we were online. Richard started playing the music on Alexa the other day. And it's so beautiful. And I, I start crying. I was yeah, telling our daughter cry. about it. And <clears throat> I started crying when I talked about You've seen it. Yes. Ennio Marconi did the music. He did when I talked it. about the kisses. Mm. And I just started to weep. Mm. It's yeah, if, if any of you of haven't most, seen it, it's uh, an amazing film. It is an amazing film. We, we ordered we ordered it online. We found it last yeah. night. So we're going to see it. Awesome. So um, these things that we've done, we don't get to see them, you know, when they're done. It's really yeah, kind of sad. A lot. A lot. Too. <laughs> people just assume, I, I, you know, you, you do a lot of conventions too, but you go to these conventions, people just assume they give you the, mm -hmm. the game. Some of them do. But very, very few, maybe one out of ten yeah. does right. it. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you're booked for four hours on a job or two hours, depending. Mm -hmm. And then you walk away, and you never see it. Yeah. And then you go to the conventions, and thank goodness the fans yes. know. Yes, And they know everything. Yes. Um, but really I'm do. going, and they go, Tell me the line from episode. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it starts feeling a little bit like Galaxy Quest. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Timmy PSP, uh, the, the movie that we were talking about is called Cinema Paradiso. Yeah. Cinema Paradiso. Um, going back to Lupin really quick, Richard, because so, I wasn't aware of that, that you originally directed it. Did you also originally write the episodes too or did that come later no i but i i have been since adapting a lot of this stuff uh, yeah you know I, I did the new movie that just came out and uh, uh, a lot of the series ellen and i co-directed uh, lupon part four mm -hmm. i directed lupon part five um i didn't write those but i mm -hmm. have been written i've written a lot of the movies we've done for discotech a lot of the big uh, mm -hmm. lupon movies the older ones sure and so i've written and directed those I've been involved with Lupin for a long, long time, and uh, you know, he, he, Jigen's one of my favorite characters, and I, I love, you know, being part of that show and yeah. you know, that. And I, I made sure they, they, you know, I wanted to make sure they brought you back to play uh, your character because, you know, they had a in in part uh, five they had a couple of the, the, the old villains come back, and I, yeah. I said, yeah, let's get the guys who actually did the did them originally, you know, right? But the guy I can't remember his name. He was a uh, he was a screenwriter, and he really, he did, yeah, he didn't know. He <laughs> we did, have a nickname. Yeah, he didn't know much about sync, to be honest with you. And I would try to fix his sync and fix some of his jokes, quite frankly. But uh, which is they, something that we do when we go into the studio, because many times it's like Richard's a fabulous adapter, and I go in. It's like when he adapted uh, the script into Navajo, it was phonetically written. 
<clears throat> and I could I could understand where he was going when I was directing the actors into the Navajo language. Mm -hmm. But if you more often than not, the adaptations are not that good. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, it used to be you always had to have an adaptation, but you'll go into the studio with a translation. Yeah. yeah. And translations aren't that good. Is what we, we actually did that for uh, part four, Ellen and I, and we had, we had uh, what was it, three weeks to do 26? Three and a half weeks. To do 26, 26 episodes. episodes. And so, he was in one. Yeah, I was in one studio. Ellen was in another studio. And we were three and a half weeks? Yeah, and we were literally working from 9 in the morning to 11 at night. Every day. To finish it on time. Mm -hmm. And we did finish oh. it. We didn't even have an adaptation. They gave us a we translation. Had to rewrite so we had to rewrite every line, line on the fly. Mm -hmm. It was, oh my God, what a oh. nightmare. Oh, my and, and it, Great. Wow. And, and then it's on somebody's a year desk for a year later. after that. Oh. Uh, it yeah. came out. So that so is crazy. For yesterday, and then yesterday yeah. was a year and a half later. Yeah, so that's the but, uh, frustration of the but, business. But the way we did it, because wow. we didn't know who was going to do what character. And so I, I put, to, I'm, I love putting things together that make things easier. Mm -hmm. So I put a system together whereby we both had the characters and we'd highlight them once we were doing them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we both had, um, what was it, an Excel sheet where we were doing that. Yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. Yeah. But we didn't know. And I'd say to him, so what did this guy say? The line is blank. So I would know how to write it. And then right. we were, we're I was just, I was just terrified because we didn't even have time to watch them down at the end. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they went through, hopefully, you know, they had some quality control at the other end and they were watching them down. But it's like, I always like to watch them down because then I like to Same. shift stuff. Mm -hmm. I like to, if something's dead, I go, let's put in a line there, you know, I, just to have it. You know and what that, it was we like. We weren't able to do any of that stuff, but it still came out really well. And it was the number one number show one, on Toonami. Yes. So people you loved it and it went really well. And uh, so. You know what it was like when we were doing it? You know, in, in high school or in college when you were cramming for an exam? Yeah. <clears throat> totally. It was like yep. that. Yep, <clears throat> yep, yep. Um, we have... Yeah. Shows I have to I have to mention two shows on Toonami that were number one, and that was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which I believe you were in that as well. Yes, and I, Joseph Joe Star in that, and that, those those two shows, mm -hmm. Lupin and JoJo, were the two number one shows on Toonami last year. So that was kind of that's cool. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We have a very vigilant fan, Richard. Um, <clears throat> Mel <clears throat> says hi. I think and... Ellen gave me an allergy thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. But uh, hey, Mel. Mel is saying that uh, she saw that you portrayed a gorilla named Buck in yeah. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, that's correct. That's true. Did you just voice the sounds for the gorilla, or did you actually do the lines for the gorilla? And what was it like? How was that process? Because I know a lot of it was CGI. Oh, it was, uh, well, I, I wasn't on camera. They, they CGI'd that character. I right. did the voice of, of okay. Buck. Okay. Um, and I've done a lot of that stuff. I've I've done X Men and uh, a lot of the Planet of the Apes. I've been in all of them. And uh, and we went to the zoo to do research. And, did you really? No. No. Cool. <laughs> I, 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 I you know a lot of those those big movies. I, I did voice stuff on as well. Mm. The Deadpool did uh, what was it? Colossus and I did right. Uh, yes. Uh, what's that other character's name? Uh, uh, I could use just too much stuff to remember. Steve. I always turn to him to ask him what what character was I in. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that particular character, they just wanted a real deep, you know, and I had to do like a you know an ape sound and and do that. And it was really tough because mm -hmm. you know it's you're doing that for long periods of time and it's uh, it's it, hard on the it's voice. Rough. Now, obviously, they they process it so it sounds like an animal, but I had to create the original sound for that that right. character. And uh, yeah, it was really fun. I mean, uh, like I said, I've done a lot of uh, a lot of movies and done characters like that for them, you know, over the years. So, and you, you know. did did you audition for that as well? No, I was just it was a group actually. I oh, just, okay, I mean, part of a loop group. Yeah, and it was uh, you know Johnny Gitkum's group, and I went in and did uh, did that, and then he had me back for the next one, and uh, mm. and then uh, you know he's he's had me in for a bunch of different stuff, and we yeah. you know it's been really fun. It's really yeah, fun yeah, to work yeah. on. Them. 
especially when you look at those residuals, right? Yes. Yes. For the anime, I gotta tell you. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> I'm gonna scroll. What is what is coming today? Yes. <laughs> uh, what, uh, I you know I I don't remember where she is from. I I know I I think she's from the U.S., but I'm not positive. Um. I am scrolling back just to make sure I'm trying to take care of as many people's questions as possible. Um, Outside of the country that uh, tune in to I have some people who come in from a lot of different countries. I have one person, I don't see her on today unless she's just being quiet, but a uh, person from Spain, um, Australia. Uh, Ashley, Ashley Burke is, is here with us. He's from Australia. We love Australia. Yes. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Been to Spain, but I kind of like the music. Yeah. Well, the rain in Spain stays in the plane. In the plane. Ah, uh, let's see. Spain is the two places I like to go. If this Fakakta mm -hmm. virus ever. Yeah, I, 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 I. Uh, just a, uh, not really a question for you, Ellen, but more of a, of a comment. Uh, L'Oreal, uh, who is on here with us, um, she admires you very much. She is a writer herself, um, uh, so she can totally relate to some of the stuff that you were talking about, uh, especially as it you know pertains to being able to use your imagination, and that's one of her favorite pastimes. So there you go. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Um... Checking, 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 checking. Uh, a lot of Kingdom Hearts fans, Richard. <laughs> uh, uh, do you, uh, if if you could choose the characters that you get to play, would you prefer, as you are currently kind of not, I wouldn't say being typecast, but. Would you prefer being bad guys as opposed to good guys? Does it, do, do, as an actor, do you do you have a preference? You know what? They're they're both really fun. It's like I, I think that I play play the two extremes of that. I play Raiden, who is a really noble, great character, and I play the Joker, who is the most despicable character I can think of. Yeah. So uh, I I think that uh, they're they're both they both bring me a lot of joy in playing mm -hmm. them, and you know I really I really enjoy. Playing all kinds of characters, so you know, a lot of people say, "Do you prefer this? Do you prefer that?" I just, you know, I've been very Knockwood uh, fortunate, and I've had a, a broad spectrum of characters to play, which has been really wonderful. You both have, uh, yes. Yeah, well, it's been it's been really really nice, and uh, you know, I people always say, well, "Would you?" I, I've just been really lucky in that I've gotten to play so many wonderful characters. And, uh -huh. I, I, I don't really feel like I, I'm like, you know, oh, I wish I could play this or I wish I could play that because I get to play a lot of those characters all the time. So, uh, you know, it's just really, really wonderful. And I've been very blessed and lucky in that a lot of the characters that I love, like Bateau and Jigen and, uh, you know, Raiden and Joker, and all these characters keep returning and I keep getting to play them again and again, which is, I, and I feel like I get better and better with each incarnation of these characters. So yeah. It's really, really fun, and, and Ansem, of course, is of course, one yeah, yeah. Return. So it, you know, it just I, you know, those are the characters you love that they just keep coming back, and you get to keep playing them. It's just wonderful, you know. Yeah. But you know what it what it really comes down to? It's like we've been doing it almost forty years. I said that yeah, right. yeah. Um, you don't and, have to whisper and, it. I've already said it. Okay. <laughs> 35 so I don't know how that happened but. it's like when you look back at, <laughs> at a career like this I, I mean I never imagined that we were going to be doing this all this yeah. stuff yeah I mean it just came about I remember when we went to a Robotech convention and and everybody was nuts and we're going really because when we started doing yeah, this think anything of it we didn't yeah. think, where was this going to be seen? I mean, right. it's like I always say we recorded in the bastard hours of the studio. You know, the day hours were taken for, uh, you know, the 
we, the normal stuff. Yeah. That was the question. They said, will you work the bastard hours? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my uh, gosh. We worked 10 till 3, you know? Yeah, it was crazy. I, mean, uh, I remember yeah. those. <laughs> it dude, Steve. Yeah. I know, it is. Um, there was a joystick that they had to turn, you know? <laughs> And this is true for a lot of these people. It was a people, real change. The, yeah, the people don't realize this. First of all, it wasn't. There was no digital stuff, uh -huh. so everything was real time. So you had to, you had to, you do a one reel, and then they would have to go through the whole reel and rewind it, mm -hmm. and put the other reel on, and then they put that on, and then there was no beeps. Yep. So you have yeah. to grab the time code off of the screen and try to grab it, and you keep you do it as many times as it yeah. took, as to it took it until you got it. Yep, because they they didn't have yeah. Pro Tools. Nope. Yeah. I actually have a story. Um, I was working on Robotech. And Bob Barron, may he rest in peace, hmm. was a. Did you ever work with him? Bob. Bob Barron. Bob Barron. Barron. No. No. Yeah, he was. Well, old school. He he, he <laughs> looked he looked like Ichabod Crane. He was very very tall. Very, very skinny, yeah. and he existed on coffee, cigarettes, and candy bars. Yeah. Oh, and, Snickers bars, that's what I mean. Yeah. So, anyhow, you were in the studio, and he was a chain smoker. He'd be smoking in the studio with you, in the booth while you. you While you were, and it's like... Can it you was, imagine <clears throat> that today? Oh, my I God. I mean, it smelled like a, a cigarette den. Oh, yeah, my Ellen. Lord. Wow. Wow. It's awful. So I was, I remember the Robotech days working with Bob, and then they'd say real change, and you got five or ten minutes because these reels, they were huge. They were like this. Yeah. And they had to take one off. Then they'd have to go into the vault mm -hmm. to find the right reel and bring that on, put it on to the, uh, put it on to the reel. <clears throat> And I kind of missed the real change because we actually got a nice break every time. We got, we so we'd get 10 minutes. So they'd go real change and I'd go. <sighs> then you could breathe. I could yes. breathe one. Yes. And, and, and one of the other uh, directors who was doing uh, nose candy the entire time. That's a oh, boy. <laughs> that, that's a whole other story, kids. Drugs. Actually. <clears throat> um, one of the, this, was, this was a live action movie that I was doing. I was <clears throat> I was playing the lead panda, oh. and, <laughs> and this guy. Uh, anyhow, the director was not very healthy. Mm. He, That's anyhow, putting it mildly. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, uh, one day I came in to finish up the the panda, and. They found him dead in his car down below. The panda or the director? The panda. <sighs> no. <laughs> the, the director. Oh, no. He, was, he had abused his body in so many ways. He actually... Let's not, uh, close, count, close, let, let's not count the ways. Okay. Mm. Uh, he was down there with a prostitute. Oh, geez. And, you know, as, as directors do after they finish. Right. <laughs> Actually, she was the one who had to call the police. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. oh. Inner sound days. Oh, my Lord. Those are good old days, kids. <laughs> All right. Because we are um, getting close to 3.30, guys, I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, so I've got three final questions for you. Beginning, beginning with Edamon. Um as far as coming up with that voice, which obviously everybody knows who watched season one of Digimon Richard, uh, sounds very similar to Elvis. Uh, whose idea and choice was that? Was it yours? Was it uh, the director's? Who came up with that? That's a really good question. I think I think I kind of uh, came up with the voice because what happened was he he would uh, carry around a uh, a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. And a song about the teddy bear. <laughs> yep. So I I saw the teddy bear. I just I, and I, for some reason I think that clicked, and I think we 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 did that. You know, I mean, it's funny how those voices happen because, you know, digressing really quickly, uh, there was a show I did called uh, 
Techno Man. I don't know if you remember that. I show did or that not. too. Ellen was yeah. Too. Yeah. But uh, the, the character that I got, I played this character. It was kind of like Scotty on Star Trek. He was like the engineer. And what happened was, I I auditioned doing like a George C. Scott kind of voice mm -hmm. and cast. And when I came in. The director said, let's see if we can do something a little different. He goes, I kind of would like him to be Scottish, like Scotty. So I did a Sean Connery. Mm. And that's how the voice happened. And then, fashion, you know, we're talking about all the stuff we did. One of the things I did that a lot of people don't know is I, I was a supervisor, international ADR supervisor for DreamWorks, Universal Pictures, and uh, another big company. And I went all over the world supervising movies like Gladiator and uh, Galaxy Quest. Oh, wow. It was an unbelievable time. Ellen hated it because she was stuck here with the kids. Mm. They were a little growing up at the time. Six yeah. months. Yeah. Oh. I was, I was all over the world. It was an unbelievable job. Anyway, he wow. Fun. I was in Germany one time and I was watching Techno Man. And when that character came on, mm -hmm. he was speaking German with a Scottish accent. And I thought that was hilarious because I know as doing this work that a lot of times when we dub movies or TV shows from other countries, they don't watch those shows when they dub them into other languages they take our version the english version because it has all the time codes and all the stuff and they basically adapt it to that so they somebody heard me doing a scottish accent as this character and they thought that's how the character should sound with a scottish accent so they did a german with a scottish accent and i was like rolling on the floor oh so my there. gosh that is funny well you guys have done th thousands of characters um yeah. throughout all the years that you guys have been voicing is there I know it's hard because it's like picking out your favorite child, but sure. is there a particular character that has had a significant impact on your life for either of you? You go first. You know, uh, that's kind of a question we get asked a lot yeah. at the conventions. <clears throat> and my answer is always... Every time I get a new character, it becomes my baby. It becomes my child. Of course. And I fall in love with it, and I do it. And if you would toss out any of the characters, I, I have stories about them and about how much I love them and about how much I, I enjoy doing them. And it's like, what is my favorite job? My next job. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it, yeah. It really is. Because that's what makes a career is just keeping, you know, the employment happening and, mm -hmm. and being able to do this. And uh, we're we're very very blessed and we're very lucky that oh, we've boy. been able to have these careers yeah. from something we never imagined was even going to happen. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. With me, there, I can't I can't really narrow it down to one because I have so many that I like, but I. I have just, you know, like I love Joker, I love Raiden, I love Bateau, I love Jigen, uh, mm -hmm. Ansem's another one. Um, there's there's one character that's not as well known. He was in Xenosaga game. I played Ziggy, Ziggurat 8. And uh -huh. he was a really fun character for me to play because he, mm -hmm. he, he was like Robocop, basically. He came home and his family is, well, not like Robocop in that way, but he came this my character came home and his family was killed so he killed himself mm -hmm. and they regenerated him and he had this really sense of pathos about him mm. which was as an actor it was really really a wonderful character to play yeah and 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 real a real sadness to him and he had a lot of different levels and layers and so as an actor it was really fun to play him so he was he was a really fun character that i always think fondly of mm. <clears throat> cool well actually i mean Oh, go ahead if you no, need No, no, no. Um, it, it's like if I look back on my favorite characters, I did love playing Bleach. I loved Haraway in Ghost in the Shell Innocence. I, um, Jack's mom in Mar wasn't mm. one of my favorite characters because I had to yell all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that's our least yeah, favorite those are the thing. Yeah, of course. Of course. When we're yelling, um, I I played the villainous in Gundam uh, Unicorn. Uh, what what is that called? Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. Right. And I played uh, Martha Des Carbine in that. Um, and all of all of the characters, you know. Actually, it's like going back to live action. 
I yeah. love live action because it's kind of like putting yourself into the spirit of uh, the character there and becoming, and you breathe. Um, I loved all the characters I did in Lupin, uh, like what was in the mermaid one, the movie. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, over the wall. Rosetta. Yeah. Oh, Rosetta. Yeah. Um, yeah. what, what was it called? Eternal mermaid of the sun or what? <laughs> what is uh, we did, we did two of them that they had the weirdest name. What was the, the gold, uh, the legend, the, the legend of gold of Babylon. The, the, uh, I played the gold, the legend of, was, was that, I don't know. And then there was another one, the something, something. And I played, that, I played the that. villainesses in both of them. I don't know where they came. Right. I think they were direct translations of the titles and they just sounded really awkward and weird, but mm -hmm. you know, one, one, one made in them. Yeah. In it. That was a, that was actually a really good one, and then they had that. Which one, one was Rosetta? Rosetta was the one where the uh, the aliens came and they wanted the gold from Babylon. Oh, and, that. And, anyhow, I had a sing in that one, and oh, <laughs> it it was this strange, strange song, and I thought, where is the melody? But then but she was by drunk, the end, so it was okay. and and it was. <laughs> It was fun because she was drunk and, you know, she she got to do all this fun thing. Actually, another, it's an old series called Noen. And oh, yeah, I fun. played. I, I, I directed really, that. Too. Yeah. yeah I, I really love playing that uh, Miyoki Goto, I think her name was. But uh, she was a real person. And that's one of my, my things when I go to conventions is talking about the roles of women mm. uh, because the roles of women have been stereotyped. Yeah. And uh, I, I hate that. It's a pet peeve that women have advanced. I mean, we haven't advanced, but the culture and the Me Too generation is finally coming about and saying, no, we're, we're not all just Barbie dolls. We we have substance, right? And so to find characters that have substance is really, really a joy. Yeah. And, and I just want to throw it out to everybody out there. If you want to write, if you want to illustrate, please do good, strong female characters. They don't all have to be. Uh, women who are, are sword carrying, gun toting people make them real. Take, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, as a writer, I say this: take take people around you. Who do you love? Who do you hate? Those are the the people that you draw from. So you can have real characters. They can all have magical powers. But, but draw the characters from real people so that they have substance mm -hmm. and they're not, that they're not artificial. And, and to you who want to uh, write and who want to illustrate and to the people who want to uh, act as well, be voice actors, I, I throw the gauntlet out to you and, and say to you, when you do these draw from real characters and people in your lives. You know, the bird isn't just a bird sitting in a tree. The bird has a purpose for being there. And where can you draw that voice from? Hmm. And, and make it organic, because years ago, everything was very cartoony, and now the trend is for everybody to be real, to be real and yeah. natural. Mm -hmm. And that's we cast and that's the way we act so and that's your money voice is the voice who you are right now so I throw the gauntlet out to you and and wish you all the very very best that is a great way to end the show um, <laughs> absolutely awesome I was going to digress and, and ask and, uh, and, and bond with Richard about a, a James Bond question but I will save that for another time my friend <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you sure? <laughs> All right. Last question of the day. <laughs> Spiel about. Uh, I know, right? Exactly. 
<laughs> going back over 50 years, right? Worth yeah. of worth of, of films. Uh, if yeah. you could have any particular car from a movie, which one would it be and why? Well, that's a, that's a really tough question. I know. It's a tough question. I mean, obviously, everybody wants the DB5. The DB5 is the Goldfinger, is the original James Bond car. It's a great car. Yeah. I personally really like uh, Timothy Dalton's car in uh, uh, Living Daylights because it's a Aston Martin, but it's a convertible, and I'm a ragtop man. Okay. So there you go. Uh, but there's a lot of great. Oh my God, so many great cars. Absolutely. Mine. You know? Mine. My, my, uh, which is yours? The Lotus Esprit from uh, Spy Who Loved Me. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you want to be able to go underwater and everything? Oh, heck yeah! Absolutely! Yes! Anyway. <laughs> Guys, I, <laughs> I know both of you are so extremely busy with everything that you've got going on. And you could just, you know, take carve a section out of today and just make some time for all of your fans who love and admire you greatly, who had such great questions for you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being able to uh, spend some time with us today. Um, I know it's a crazy time we're all going through right now. Please, please, please continue to stay safe. Be well. And all of you out there, please stay safe. Yeah, same. Yep. Yeah. And we as, yep. Yeah. want to make today well, yeah, our tomorrow. We love you guys and we miss you guys and all of us feel this way. We, we're not able to see you guys at conventions and it's really sad and I hope I hope this changes at yes. some point. You know, but yep. We, but have, we have to wait it's until it's safe. To do Absolutely. It, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. It'll just make it worse, you know. So on behalf of Behind the Voices, guys, uh, as I wrap up every single show, please, 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 please be good humans. Keep your feet on the ground. Reach for the stars. I love you all. Thank you, guys. Love you. Thanks for having us on, Steve. Thank you. It was fun. You got it. My pleasure. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. You will. Bye, Steve. Bye. Bye.